What does it take to get beyond the damage of words? I'm Katrina Collier. Join me each week as I explore what it takes to step into a happier future. My guests are sharing their stories of when they realized that they needed help and what it took to take that first step so that you leave inspired and maybe even start on your own path to self-love, care, compassion, and of course, happiness. So without further ado, let's hear their stories. Ginger, welcome to Beyond the Damage of Words podcast. It feels like forever ago we were messaging about here, this, but here we are. Yay! Yeah, it's very exciting. Well, Thank you. I, I haven't seen you in years. I mean, nope. three and a half years went to the pandemic, but I mean, what, 2016, 17? Oh, too long. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. Uh, are you? I'm pretty good. Yeah. Which is, which is, which is good. Yeah. I'm, uh. I'm becoming more my authentic self and that has like a, like a joy with it. Yeah. Oh, isn't it? It's so lovely. <laughs> Just drop the masks and become yourself. So, well, let's talk about that. Where, how did we get mm-hmm. to that point? What was the first step? What led you onto the path of healing? What got you going? It, um, it, it, I couldn't function literally. So one of the, what happened was I, um, um, I really identified with my work and I loved my work oh. and one, my, the, the different stages. And uh, we got uh, a new leader who mm-hmm. didn't really understand my role and changed a couple of things up. And, and I was just like, I went into like, what is happening? So I lost the one thing that I could identify with because I wasn't, I didn't really know myself. And that just... Dang rendered me non-functional crying not being able to do like life stuff as well and then my manager said just Susa you need to go home that was the first thing (laughs) like you need to stay home (laughs) yeah and I was like uh Okay, <laughs> but in a po- we're talking in a positive, supportive way, or in a you can yeah, go home absolutely. and spend money way. No, absolutely. Oh, wow, how the world's uh, changing. That's good. yeah, and that's you know, it's also um, where I come from, Hungary, mm-hmm. Eastern Europe. Uh, uh, you guys call it communism, but it was actually socialism. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, okay, yeah, I need to take like this is not working, and I can try as hard like with all my power, like I cannot function. So yeah. we need to stop. And then so you were you were obviously suppressing all of your emotions. Oh yeah. Everything you're feeling Big time. focusing on work. Yeah. Yeah. And I also like for um at one point throughout my journey I just realized I don't really understand my emotions because I cannot name them. Because I never learned to name them. So because we were was that surviving. A- <laughs> Was that a family thing or was it an Eastern European thing? I think a bit that's, of both. that's more like the East, what you call the Eastern Bloc. Like the yeah. socialism isn't about um, be your beautiful self. It's about here is your block and then fit in a bit, if I can simplify that. So yeah. it strips away all the spiritualism uh, um, um, and and it, it was just, you know, just like – like really core survival is what we learned. It's like striving to to provide a better life, find something that you excel at. I did. It was sports. So I was pushed into yeah. sports really, really early uh, on really high level. And it, that, that was just my value. I yeah. actually wrote this up. I was like, the value wasn't me. Yeah. The value was what I contributed and what I did. The, yeah and your achievements and yeah that, absolutely it, yeah wow that makes it hard to really know yourself doesn't it yeah and and coupled that with you know like really early not really playing with my own um uh, um age category I was always like because I was physically growing faster I was always pushed higher with oh, older yeah. older uh, uh, people. So I, I also missed that element uh, uh, from it. Um, so it was like, Gosh, <laughs> and amazing. then my mom got sick. Yeah, it was hard. Wow. And did your mom pass young then? 
as well. When yeah, you she was younger. 41 when she passed. Uh, she had, uh, she started with breast cancer. I think if I, I don't have a lot of memories because my brain survival technique is you're not going to remember, remember a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, this um, familiar. That's my yeah. go-to as well. So yeah. what did you do before 10? No idea. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's just, it's so weird. But thankfully, yeah. it's opening up now. So I think she struggled with it with the, for about four or five years. Um, yeah. First, she went into remission. So there was a good chance that she's going to like really heal from it. And then it just, it went everywhere. That's tough. And so I was 16. Happened? Yeah. Oh, so you've already a bit confused about your identity. Then mum passes right at a really crucial age. Yep. Oh my goodness. Yep. So what, it wasn't pretty oh, <laughs> what I did. No. No. <clears throat> but it's it's survival, isn't it? And it's yeah. you, if you don't know how what you're doing and I think with and so has been some of the work that you've done now to be looked back at that time and oh, you know what's what, like what did you do? What really, happened really the lovely? Yeah. Oh sorry. Yeah. What I've just been in Austria with my brother. It's been 23 years that she passed and it was the first time that we talked about her. It was a long time coming. It's been really, really like it was, it was visceral, but it was good to, yeah. to talk about her a bit. It wasn't like <laughs> very extensive. How did we experience it? How do we look back at stuff? And, uh, and that, that's, that's done some good. Yeah. Is that because you've been, I mean, as we were to fill in the gap yet from when work sent you home, basically, <laughs> have, have you been doing self-work that that has allowed you to therefore have that conversation and feel almost the confidence to have that conversation? Because it, yeah. it can be quite tough, can't it, with your siblings if you think they're shut off as well? Oh, yeah, yeah mm. absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I started with, when I first stumbled into this block, I think I was around 30, 31. And I couldn't, like, I couldn't. And I was just like, you need to go to talk to someone. I was like, All right, I need to go to talk to someone. So I looked up uh, um, coaches mm-hmm. because I thought um, I'm very much, like, action-driven. And mm-hmm. I thought it was uh, it was daunting to go into, you know, psychology. Plus, back then, I was still under the impression that, you know, like, I wasn't damaged through... <laughs> various traumas and bad. Like, very strong <laughs> yeah it should be fine I'm okay I'm not that bad <laughs> yeah. yeah absolutely like look at me I'm I'm alive <laughs> look how I've achieved like come on <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah I was you know successful in my professional life and I was like yeah <laughs> and um and I uh came across uh, a women's coach mm-hmm. and um I was like okay let's see so she was this really feminine presence and I was like, I was itching to get out of the chair and I was like, nope, you need to sit there. <laughs> yes. So that, that was, that was a, a, a moment of just go with it and see where it goes. And then that's how we started the, the first very much focusing on the work situation. Mm-hmm. But then obviously, you know, you, you start to open up and then you see like, there isn't two Susas, one that's, you know, at home and private and then one that's work. Uh, mm. um, so that, that was a, that was a first step. Yeah. Uh, it's funny when you say that. I think of our work and what we, you know, we, we do on our professional side with the, my, this is still my professional side, but you know what I mean? Uh, the, the, <laughs> everyone's saying, well, Facebook's my personal space and LinkedIn's my, bit. <laughs> like mm-hmm. almost what you're saying yeah. is like that and you can't, they're all like all one. It's yeah. Yeah. We are who we are. Can we go back to the feminine energy though? Oh yeah. <laughs> I think we're both, we're both similar. We're probably slightly more in the masculine energy. Was it, did you enjoy that eventually? Did she, did you kind of, ease into your feminine energy to balance it out more um yeah or did you because it was like connected you were- to <laughs> no 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 no. I did because because it was it that was a really really soft start and then it really kicked into high gear when Ruby oh. appeared um to me suppressing it because because that was my mom and my mom passing I I just couldn't allow it to feel that pain so it was starting off me opening up the idea as opposed to like 
I identify, I identify uh, with my dad because I was always a, a dad's girl with the sports and all kind of thing. And I was like, mm. no, you need to face the music that you very much, not just the nose and the chin, uh, you have <laughs> attributes of your mom. And, yeah. that, and I think that was it. Like I need to soften okay. into, into being that. Yeah. Yeah. How did she get, how did she get you to do that? Was there a particular methods that she used or was it just conversation or? Conversation and writing. Um, mm. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, that was. Having just finished <laughs> writing a memoir. Oh, it's so therapeutic. Yeah. 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 Um, because um, you know what it is and it's also speaking a different language. So that's really interesting uh, because that allows me to express myself. A Hungarian for me is very much identifying um back then definitely 100 percent with that person like that's me and then learning a different language i learned dutch um um when i moved here which i was a grown-up so that allowed me also to like express the feelings identify the feelings being able to say them you know set some boundaries so that really helped the that aspect of having to change my brain to learn a a third language. Yeah, um, I know. I was actually how can you speak? I was just working that out. <laughs> I barely manage English. <laughs> that, that, that was for me. That was really, really helpful. And yeah. and back so then, you would write in Hungarian then. So when you were were you like free no. writing or journaling or? Uh, I was I was writing in English. Oh. So so that was I I'm not very I'm still not very good at expressing where I am right now and who I am right now in, in Hungarian, I'm getting a lot better at it, thankfully, yeah. but it's not fully there. I have a much easier time in the two other languages than I learned. I think as long as it's out of the body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, it, the, that's the thing. Yeah. The reason I smiled was that they were talking about, because I've just been to the Hay House Writers Workshop, they were talking about Julia Cameron, who's all about the artist's way, which is all about free writing and just writing, like with no thought, no effort to journal, no, like no, just write, just pull out a piece of paper and write on it. It's just mm -hmm. so liberating. That's actually why I smiled. And then I did think, yeah, actually the memoir was quite therapeutic. Yeah. But I found <laughs> it, it, one of the things they talked about, though, was, which I thought was really interesting, is don't write from the, the wound right from the scar so if you ever feel like you mm -hmm. want to write make sure that it's a scar like you've healed because yeah. you could tell that there were people in the room that they blessed them they were just so emotional it's like yeah, you're not quite ready so you'll write your first yeah. you'll write it but it won't really be it because you'll be healing 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 yeah. it's just so yeah apparently it helps you heal like twice as fast or something as well there's there was a stat they said on the weekend that I kind of mm. remember which was quite yeah amazing. You know what it is also when you write, you have to sit with it. And that's something that I that I learned with my panic attacks that I had. And and mm -hmm. I remember the first one I, I I for a long period I didn't know what it was. But I went into a venue as a recruiter to network. Yeah. Oh, kill me now. And um it was I still hate networking. <laughs> yeah. It was a peg bob and I was like, where is the exit? I like I need to see the exit. <laughs> You know, like so that I can go. That's where it started. And then at one point I, I got into doing yoga. I got into like also like I firmly believe that all of the trauma and everything is stored in your body. And then I was doing yoga and I had the urge to just leave the room now. Like leave the room now. And the idea of no, just sit down. Like mm. the goal is not, not to do the pose, the goal is not to leave the room. And that's that sitting with it, like the allow it to happen, don't run away from it. Don't yeah. try to, you know, like stuff something else in mm. there, not to have to feel it. Yeah. It's almost the, the voice that's telling you to run is like your ego and your soul yeah. is just saying, just sit here and just, it's okay. Just, yeah, it's okay. What's not yeah. okay is to stay permanently in that mood, <laughs> that feeling, but for that, <laughs> however long. Day, <laughs> like it's okay to just feel it and yeah yeah because if you don't feel it now you're gonna feel it later yeah and then yeah. like you said with the body keeping the score with the um which actually is strange I haven't yeah. read that book but I've yeah, mentioned it <laughs> I, know. I haven't read that book but I have read um it didn't start with me, but my father suppressing his anger and getting heart disease and then I'm doing my research for mine and there's 
suppress anger, get heart disease. I was like, whoa, yep. that's exactly what dad did. Like, you know, and no, <laughs> none of us, we want to be healthy. We're living a lot longer. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So which, yeah. Um, you're doing a specific yoga. Did you end up staying doing yoga or you managed to stay for one lesson? <laughs> no, I couldn't. I, I went out and then I went out and then I went back. So that was that was um, the first time that I felt that. And I was like, that's when I became conscious of it. Like, this is what you're feeling, you know. It's okay. But also to allow yourself to say, it's okay that you went out, go back. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's a journey. And, yeah. <laughs> and I was, through sports and through academic achievements or whatever it was, it was about competition and no failure and then going and learning and just doing it. And I was no, like, I am, well, yeah. just. Oof. yeah it's just t- because then you were disappointing other people yeah you know like that's kind of the as a child I kind of like I think from what I remember and that's I have to like say very specifically I don't yeah. remember that much yeah. yet but that's how I can imagine like that was that was who I was I was a, a really really great handball player for example I was on the national team for my age category. I was playing in the big leagues, you know. I was like, yeah, so that was the thing that I was known for. And I, that was me. And if I failed at that, that, you know, that just takes away you. Yeah. Oof, that's really hard when you're so young. Yeah. With the, with the memories, I found, because um, I've dissociated from my trauma through memory loss, um, it's really is handy having a sister who I can ask occasionally, but she dissociates her, from her trauma in a different way. So it's, mm-hmm. it's really interesting how we all deal with it. Um, but I did find, again, through the writing, that stuff will come. I, I, I haven't got it all back. My I'm substantially older as well. Um, but <laughs> the, the stuff is wafting up that needs to be healed and released. So yeah. I have had things come up and I'm like, like literally as I'm writing and I've written, oh, wow, I've just had this come up. Like literally mm-hmm. I've written it like that because it's been so interesting. So you probably yeah. will find things start coming up and then you can just like release them and just let that energy out. Yeah, so that's, the, that's the thing that I find in my journey is just that the first one was really scary. And then as you go, you know, things that come up and no matter how heavy they are, the 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 knowledge like the, the first thing that sets within me is ask for help. You're not alone. How on earth are you meant to do this alone? Mm. Like that's, that's, that's just on, like, that's just non post not possible to do life you, on your own. Had, had you thought you couldn't ask for help before that point? Yeah, because that was a failure because I was raised, like, imagine the situation that there is a family with three kids So my older brother, me, there's one and a half years between us. And my younger brother is eight years between us. And and my mom gets sick. And then very obviously for a while, you know, it's been known. Not nobody spoke to us, Mm. but she's not going to make it. But there is no help. And she passes and there is no help. And you and as a family, we don't discuss it. So there is like... Everybody is doing their best to pretend that we can go on and like try to make it work. Well, obviously, you know, <laughs> and it's for becoming help. a mess. <laughs> wow, that's so much to take as a child. So when you then got to that point where you're like, I can't do this alone, I do need to ask for help. Were you scared to ask for it? Was um, there a moment of... <gasps> Oh, no, just because I was so far gone that I was like, there is no other option. Yeah. I went to the wall and I just flowed <laughs> into it a bit. Like that's it. <laughs> yeah. I found it's really interesting. A lot of the guests, we, you know, we have this hyper independence that's come because of our stuff. And then there's this unwillingness to ask for help. And then when we do, everyone's so lovely. Everyone just helps. There's never a, yeah. but we've got it in our heads. So we can't ask for help. It's quite. It's quite yeah. interesting. Seems everyone's been on a bit of a journey, but so far that I've interviewed, not everyone, but quite a few. Yeah, <laughs> I also found it a weakness, and there was one very profound moment. There's a, he's a uh, um, he was he's still an important person to me for what you know uh, our interactions back then. But I was following a training, and the first night I was there, I, it, it was the same with him as well. My reaction to him was like, "Nope, mm, oh, not doing this." 
the thing you need the most. <laughs> yeah. And then the first night I didn't go down to dinner because I had a panic attack. And then the second day we were there and then I think it was around the afternoon maybe or even the third day. And then uh, it was a professional training focus on the influence. Yeah. And there were like people from big companies, senior mm-hmm. people. And, and then it was just a moment of, but why do you feel the need that you can't show like yourself? Because I said, because I have to be strong. And then why do you have to be strong? Because if I'm not strong, then, and then, uh, you know, floodgates open. Also interesting because like every, like, Ding, 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 ding. Everyone just started crying. It was such a sincere moment. And yeah. and what Brené Brown says, like, so, there is... Sorry? Oh, no, I was just going to w- clarify. What was the training on? Was it... Was oh, it, it was a- just... It was a professional training on influence. And I was like, I'm oh. going to learn to influence people. And it was like, no, it's actually very much about you. Oh, wow. <laughs> So it wasn't even, it's not like you'd gone to a, you know, a retreat or something. This was just yeah. professional. Uh, it I didn't was, yeah. seem scary at all. I do notice the vulner- the, the resistance. Again, it's often yeah. when we really need something. So your subconscious was aware that this was going to be super helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, Banjo is just tuning in in the background just to create a nice vibe. Sorry, <laughs> everybody. Um, anyway, you were about to give a Brene Brown quote about that. Yeah. No, it's it's just the idea of, of the strength of vulnerability, vulnerability yeah. and yeah. and your authentic self. And that was kind of like the first one because I was I was really afraid that mm. if I showed weakness, I'm gonna fall prey. You know? And I was like, oh damn. Yeah. <laughs> Not everybody has rights to my vulnerability. But it's different but it's different yeah yeah because you know you want to it's what it wants to be with people you trust but there's that also that I'm just thinking how many people have said to me oh you're so courageous to write this I don't feel it because like I just feel like I'm okay now like I know what you mean it's the, there is that funny yeah. moment where you realize actually being vulnerable is a strength it's a gift but it inspires yeah. other people and that's why yeah. I think it's so important that you know that we women leaders and I say that like we have followings don't we we the people that look towards us so it's like we must just embrace that vulnerability and then people go yeah. oh, I can make mistakes it's okay yeah it's how you deal with yourself yeah. with those mistakes yeah and then and then you go forward and then there is life and there is like for me it's like I'm I'm more in touch with myself I'm more myself so yeah. I'm a whole lot calmer I can make space for others you know like mm. and then uh, for me also, a couple of years ago, I, I stood on stage at Sosa talking about mental health and I talked a bit about myself and that was very daunting. I was really nervous. That's why I'm clapping because I know how nervous you are about speaking. I think I you used to really, say, I'm really never nervous. doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then, but then it's also, I've never met anyone who hasn't struggled because that's the biggest lie that we tell ourselves, that we yeah. all kind of survive life unscathed. And I'm like, we're here with my husband and we already have like a like a, a counseling fund for our daughter. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, there's money. <laughs> we do our best. <laughs> there, there is no parenting manual. There is literally no. no manual. I've written about that as well. Like there's no manual. There certainly wasn't one back then and there isn't one now. No. And yeah. It's you're doing the yeah. best you can. <laughs> uh, you learn from from your experience, and then and then you try to implement. Like at least I have the idea that maybe we try to focus on a couple of things. Like you you won't get everything right. That's just not going to happen. Um, but you can choose what you focus on. Mm. So there is that intentionality to being a parent. Mm. I think, and that's that's something that so it's interesting. I'm not very secure in a lot of things. But I always said I feel really, I feel, yes. however rough our start was, I feel really grounded as a mother. Yeah. Yes. And that's all that they can ask for. And I think that also, as you go, and, and by the way, the words yet. <laughs> yet. Because <laughs> you're on a journey. It's a journey. Mine has been a 12-year yeah. journey and I'm still going. I still flare up. I still have moments where, <laughs> you know, there's still things to, yeah, ask yeah. some of the builders that have been working around here. Um <laughs> So, but you're still, you're on that journey. Um, oh, I've completely lost my train of thought. I love it when that happens. 
<laughs> but I think oh, the, the being grounded and I think having the self-compassion as well to know that you are going to make mistakes and that's okay. And then your children can learn from that, that, that kind of Absolutely. calmness of, oh, well, what can we learn here? What can we do better? How can we do this better? And rather than, which is what you had as a child, like, come on, do better. And it's like, oh, my God. Yeah, and what, one thing that we touched on, like the the breaking the 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 generational cycles, like one oh, of the yes. things that we do with Ruby is is we have discussions in front of her. We talk about our feelings. She sees we cry. It was really interesting. We had a rough start, Ruby and me, uh, a, a fairly rough start. I was standing in the kitchen at one point, and I said to go, like I'm I'm like I'm feeling myself going mental. Mm. It was. Looking at back at it now, it was also a lot of things came together. The the profound understanding of I my mom is not here. Like who am I going to turn to? Yeah. Um, th- my the grieving of my loss of self because I was completely out of work. Mm. So I, that was like she was my new reality, and I lost myself fully. Yeah. Um, and. So we were sitting there and that's where also the, the reparation of my relationship with my dad uh, got a bit of start because, because I was like, I cannot hide anymore. Like it's so mm. bad that I cannot put up a front anymore. Like my call was that it's not going well, sit on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we were sitting around the table and I was crying and, and who was already a bit older and then and then and then he said don't cry you scare ruby i was like nope Mm-mm. like she needs to see how it looks like when a parent is upset yeah and then and needs to she space knows, to talk about why exactly and if she knows why and that she is not responsible then it's fine so when they don't know that and they just see you in tears, they think that they've – particularly how old is she yeah. or was she at that point? Well, she's now five. Because if she was around three, apparently that's around the age where you feel responsible for any mood your parent is in. So if you're explaining <laughs> and saying, no, no, darling, it's yeah. me, then no, that's amazing. And the complete contrast to what you had with your father and then also him witnessing it, I think that's amazing. What a gift to him. Yeah. He might not realize that yet, but. <laughs> well, it's interesting because it's, it's like we can have um, a pretty good discussion sometimes with my dad as well. And I'm able to express kind of how I feel, which is also something that I learned. I wasn't really mm-hmm. living the idea of expressing or that it's okay to share how I feel. Like sharing how I feel is not going to injure anyone because that's how I feel. Yeah. So it's not, that's, that's what it is. Um, so I'm pretty good at communicating current sometimes at him. <laughs> like, yeah. Not with at him, like this is how I feel. <laughs> but but uh, he's also saying like, you know, being a, a grandparent, it's like mm-hmm. it really puts it in perspective of like we should have just let go of a lot more stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He got there. He got the lesson. <laughs> You got there yeah. in the end. <laughs> so what's next? Are you still working on yourself? Are you like, I mean, obviously you feel, feel, you actually feel, I would say, completely yeah. different from how you felt. <laughs> but what, what, what are you up to? Are you still doing sp- particular things or? I'm, I'm routine? still, um, I've reconnected with yoga, which is currently like physically very painful. <laughs> I haven't done anything for a while. And I'm, and yoga I'm opening- are you doing? I'm I'm yeah. doing Yin and uh, and Yang. Uh, I would have loved to go back to hot yoga. That was like really my thing, but it's not here in house, so I just take what I can. It's just a very um, competitive, so you, that mightn't be the one you need, which could be why it's not available to you. Well, <laughs> yeah, but it's also it's also the background of it, and I was like, but the movements and the hot that felt really good for me like that that Love but that. anyways and I'm and I'm and I'm um currently also listening a lot and um, I'm in a phase where I listen to a lot of Gabon Mate, Glennon Doyle I loved her Untamed what you mentioned it's like reading the book and then every chapter is like oh it just feels like yes that's how I felt and that's how I feel and as she would say I'm a goddamn cheetah 
So <laughs> it's, it was really, really good. Like we can do hard things. And um, Brené Brown, obviously, um, it's just really trying to seek out. F- and also one part that I haven't really done a lot of work with it yet is my relationship to food. It's not healthy. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to have a better understanding of of that because I was in a phase two years ago where my brain knew it, but my heart didn't. So I had the intellectual knowledge, but it, how do you say it? But it wasn't my truth yet. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, if that yeah. makes sense. And then, and then, so I'm, so I'm, I'm starting the journey there, but from a different perspective, more from the, the what's actually good for you as opposed to lose weight. Yeah. And, and being curious about like why you're drawn to certain foods. Is there an emotion at play when you're drawn to those? Oh, yeah. Foods? <laughs> those things. Well, yeah, because it, it's, it's another way to numb, isn't it? It's like yeah, it, absolutely. It, food addiction is very real. I didn't really understand it until I recently traveled with someone who has, well, I knew she had food addiction, but I've never seen it just at supper. But when we actually traveled together for quite a while, seeing it at play was really interesting and just how tough it can be. So it's, um, it's great if that's next on the like the hit that sounds awful next on the hit list <laughs> but next thing <laughs> yeah, it is, I mean, it is. Layers, isn't it? <laughs> like you've layered down and that's the layer you've got to absolutely to yeah I, I, I genuinely believe that you know once you start the journey um you're gonna hit those moments when you're re- when you're ready for it because you can't help someone who doesn't need who doesn't see the need for help yeah you can only help yourself and when you're ready but, yeah mm. so i'm <sighs> Hopefully, no, no, that's yeah, there. That's your tip for the reader, but that's your tip for the reader, the listener. That is your tip for the listener, isn't it? Basically, I was just going to say, do you have a tip for the listener? You do. <laughs> just you know, you, when you're ready. But yeah, yeah it is out of the way. Yeah, yeah. I think you'll probably go through a few more layers, and something will twig, and then you'll be like, ah, okay, because mm-hmm. yeah. there will be there'll be a correlation. It's um, but you. Do, it's funny having. I know I haven't seen you for a while, and I mean we didn't even spend that much time together the last time I saw you. But I can <laughs> see such a shift in you. Like you are glowing. There's a definite change in your face and your demeanor from that. <laughs> it is amazing. People always say to me, "Like you glow," and I'm like, "Yeah, I didn't used to." Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. Like yeah. as you heal, you just start. And it's, I think that's what makes yeah. it so addictive because you just feel so good and you keep just doing more and more and you just feel yeah. happier and happier. And, yeah, it's yeah that's nice. the that's the thing the, the the discovery of yourself and who you were meant to be. Yeah, I think that that has such tremendous joy and peace. And yeah. do you find now when you just turn up as your authentic self, I'm not the overused buzz overused buzzwords, but do you just find people are just like okay? It's <laughs> I find they're more accepting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but and sometimes I think that's just that's the thing that was in my head. Like mm-hmm. I, I was because how I was uh, my my circumstances in childhood and yeah. how I was raised and the the, the social environment. It's like it, mm. we we continuously had to figure out how not to disappoint others or how to please others actually, yeah. and to come out even and, and and just to be able to say, you know what, I'm good as I am. That's amazing. And then once, once, once I am, then the others also have a better understanding of what they face and what they see, and are able to put it in context. And you're like, okay, that's you. Yeah, yeah. What a perfect place to end. That, what a journey you have been on, though. That's 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 a huge journey. Because you, you, yeah, wow! I'm so proud of you. That sounds really patronizing. <laughs> oh, I am because it's just that's huge because it's such a turnaround. I mean, I think it's mm. a bit like um, with the women and people pleasing. You know, we're just raised to please yeah. everybody, aren't we? And you were yeah. raised with another level again, and you've been able to go, "I am enough. This is me." You know, I am. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah. If people want to connect with you, can I just pop your LinkedIn info? Is that sure. the easiest? Yeah. Just they want to reach that's, out. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, that's amazing. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you for this conversation. Thank just, you. Um, so lovely. I'm so proud of you. Again, sounds like <laughs> it's not meant that way. But it's just because I know how hard it is. <laughs> but it's yeah, so yeah, and it's, it's just And so thank fun. you for, for doing this because that's just what I said, you know, like, like there always needs to be somebody who's first and you're making uh, making space for others 
to share their stories. So, and that that's a really, really crucial thing that you're doing. So thank you very much. And also for having me. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Always. Thank you for that. That's really kind. Thank you for tuning in to Beyond the Damage of Words. How brave, how vulnerable. All to inspire listeners like you to take a step or inspire others to take a step. Imagine what healing we could create if we normalize this conversation. So please pass this on and of course subscribe so we can do just that. Until next time, thank you.